Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 20 of the Ed Squared podcast. Uh, today, we have on the show a radio presenter, content creator, and podcaster, Kieran Elliott. <laughs> Yeah, what what have you been up to recently? Anyway, recently just been um we're on this so I do a lot of I do some stuff where I chat on breakfast. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sort of like a character on bre- on the breakfast show. All right. Wait, it's a weird it's a weird thing that they do. Um, okay. So essentially, I'll I'll go on. Well, so between six and seven, I have a quiz anywhere. Oh. Just like it's like I'll I'll, I'll describe it like a TV show in my own way, and then they'll they'll um the, the listeners try and guess what what it, what I'm saying. I usually say quite weird stuff. So it's not yeah. the easiest of challenges, but um, from that they sort of like sent me to, so they sent me to a farm once because I never went to a farm, and they sent me to a butcher's because I never went to a butcher's. And then the other day I was like, yeah, I want to officiate weddings, so I just say the daftest things yeah. and they make it happen basically. I, I saw a lot of your content and I was just like, it kind of reminded me in a way that you're like you're just yourself, and that's kind of like how it. Is. I think there's that's there's no better way of going about it than that way, like there are ways of creating a character and some people do play a character, but I can tell it's definitely just you. It's just, it's just like, I don't, cause I don't, I don't really know how to do it. I don't yeah. really know how to do this, but the, the whole like get yourself out there thing. It's yeah. sort of like, I thought all the way in my head is sort of just sell yourself and yeah. then keep it sort of consistent from there. Yeah. No, I think that's the easiest way to do it. I don't know. Uh, especially with like long form stuff. I'm not sure about radio. You know, you've got the classic like radio voice, you got this or that, but that was kind of refreshing because, you do radio, but you're not like the stereotypical like radio personality. Mm. I know there probably are people like you doing that. It's just an intro. Uh, the I've seen bits of you for social media. I think it's kind of just a thing where there's a lot of people you know you kind of see nowadays, and you're just one of those people. I'm glad I've got you on though. Oh, thank you. What I wanted to start off with talking about, I think we touched it on it a bit before, was kind of <laughs> your interesting like Instagram page. I want talk to me about like how this all started, like. Uh, you kind of being on camera being presented like what made you want to start like taking that path mm. I, I, I think i started like everywhere but everyone does in this modern era mm. as i wanted to do i saw youtube videos i wanted yeah. to be like the youtubers on youtube yeah. i wanted to do what they do i liked the british side of it and i liked, like the american yeah. side obviously right now it's it's sort of it's gone crazy and it's not mm. it's not a, a do it on your own in, in your you know, like your bedroom sort of thing mm. but i'm not their level so i've got to still sort of do it all in my bedroom and yeah. keep it like quite diy hmm. which is difficult but yeah. it's, it's 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 but I like that's that's where i started wanting to do it and yeah. wanting to be like a radio presenter what it, it was when i got to college mm. i did a course um i did a b-tech in media mm. and then they will they would just everyone talk about this radio station you could go on and yeah do a radio show so i thought oh that's fun yeah. And then I, I did a radio show. And I, you had to do a radio show on your own because the way mm. you did it was you they you recorded a link between songs and it was like a just like a voice yeah. track sort of thing. You were just like a like a memo. <laughs> you'd you'd record that and then you'd like they just mix it into the songs and stuff like that. Really? That was a bit that was boring. So I did go to a podcast after that because I thought, oh, I don't need to put music in this one. Right. Yeah. No. And it was dire. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was oh, all, yeah, obviously, you, you always produce a rubbish podcast at first. Yeah. You always produce a rubbish radio show at first. No. And then from there, I, I went to uni, did TV radio mm. and and for, like i just sort of jumped on that like one radio show because i was like buzzing for this radio show that i could do that i could just just like it was just me i could actually like start because mm. i didn't before that i was like well where do i start like yeah putting yourself out there as a personality i was like i'll just go on, i'll go on the radio and i'll say some silly things <laughs> yeah yeah at the start though there's kind of like no it's kind of so interesting because you could go any way like we were talking about before like authenticity but like that's what's so interesting. I think also when you touched on YouTube and things like that, specifically in the last like five years, I think if you look at you, you probably know Mr. Beast is right. Yeah. There's yeah. that whole, like all of a sudden, like the standard of YouTube has gone up, gone up. All of a sudden, like, I feel like it's gone from, you know, very personal videos, like low production. Now, like the standards kind of got to like Disney channel standard, like yeah. where engagement has to be so high, this, that, like, I wonder if we'll ever see it return to like what it was. Like, would you, do you agree with that? Like, I think so. I think, I think a lot of TikTok stuff's like that now. Yeah. It's uh, very DIY on TikTok. It's mm. that no one knows really what to do. And it's sort of like how YouTube was yeah. back in the day where you could just, mm. you could just go on and just like put you put yourself out there and hopefully get a bit of a following yeah yeah you, you hear less of that on youtube now for sure and there's these new platforms that are coming out yeah we wonder how long tiktok will be the the thing right because of course it's the predecessor of that was vine 
and now TikTok. I don't know. But you never really know. Like with all these apps, you're like, oh, this is going to be the thing. But then mm. like another one just comes along and gone. Like mm. do people really use Be Real now? I don't know. Be, yeah. be real, like that's another example. Where's that, right? What a wild concept, be real. Yeah. You <laughs> just out of nowhere, at some point in the day, they just you take a picture of where you are yeah. or what's happening, no matter what the circumstances, mm. and then you take that's like shared to the world. It was fun at first, but yeah. I personally just got I just got so bored of it. I could not think. I ran out of thinking of like fun fun things to do. Yeah, yeah, that as well. But I found like like for the first two weeks that everybody did it normally. Like you were getting to see pictures of people, no hair done, eating their churros in the morning. All of a sudden, bloody Cheryl is now got the right angle. Like this, it just turned into something that it wasn't. Like it feels like every kind of well, when there's money and everything, I, I don't get how there's money in B real, so that doesn't work. But like with YouTube, people started seeing there was money involved, so like it becomes more of a machine it becomes less of a like a creative medium it becomes more of a formula more yeah. of a yeah i don't know because more of a job because more of a business yeah yeah and I, I like the stage of everything which it's not it's just it is what it is it's like wholesome it's it's a, but i i suppose like nothing like that will last forever but yeah, maybe I'm just being very optimistic. Mm. But that that stage of YouTube was fun. I mean, when you've got like PewDiePie, you've got like that's like like 2012, 2011. You got KSI doing Road to Division One, like that sort of stuff it was like the golden age for YouTube. But yeah, you, we see like uh, people's attention spans getting shorter and shorter. I wonder where the cap to that is. Like, what will be? Surely there's like a limit to what our attention span can shorten to. I don't know. Like TikTok's an example of that, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, TikTok's TikTok's a weird, weird app. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where it where it stands on like the algorithm wise. Mm. Whereas YouTube, you you can you can get basically like you've got a good title, you've got a good thumbnail. Mm. Hopefully that video's gonna do well. TikTok's yeah. not quite like as predictable as that. You can't just put a video out and be like, wait. Yeah, it's 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 some random videos will just get like mm. so many views, and then that some actual videos with content won't get any views. So I don't know whether like the, the the I don't know about like the the attention span of things because yeah. I don't I don't know. So for example, I, I put a, I put a video up before, okay, and it was like it was like well I thought it, I thought it was well actual content in it, well researched. I put all this effort into it. I was like, right, kid, this is like, this is very, this has took me more longer than anything else Dex may on this app. So like brilliant. <laughs> and that, that one flopped. Yeah. But then the next one was just me sat there pull, naming a lot of random predictions that were never going to happen. Predictions right. that couldn't happen. Yeah. Predictions that were impossible to ever happen. Right. And people ate it up. People were loving yeah. it. I didn't get it. I don't, yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> I still don't fully understand TikTok. There's been videos for me, which... I thought they're absolute garbage, but I kind of just put them out there. I mean, TikTok, the standard I upload, it is actually absolutely horrendous. The things I clip up, like, because of course, like comments, I don't know if you know, comments are a way that kind of drives up engagement and they it gets more into people's more for you page, the more comments. I, one stage, purposely started putting just outrageous stuff on there just because I know people would comment on it. And that's kind of her, the only insight I can give into like how things work. I mean, it's very complicated. I know what you mean. Uh, <laughs> that's funny as fuck. Do you, what's like your favorite content to make? What do you find like the most fun? Like, just what just non-scripted just mm. i've got i've got a concept in my head of mm. something i'm gonna say yeah i've i've i just say whatever i want i think yeah. getting trained to training yourself to just like because you've got every day conversation not everything's like broadcast friendly yeah if you train yourself to get in the into the, i can say whatever i want in a broadcast like yeah in a broadcast environment, then it's just like, it's yeah. just fun. You can just say whatever you want. And it, mm. that's our favorite type of content, just speaking and just, yeah. just seeing where everything goes. I imagine it being quite hilarious. You don't have to mention any names, but with your personality clashing with, say, maybe some more stereotypical radio people, you just being yourself, and maybe, like you said before, I don't know uh, if it will make it, but you were saying like, oh, you don't speak like that. Why are you putting a radio voice? Have there any, ever been any like awkward moments in radio or anything like that? Like, this... I've had awkward moments on, on not on, like, on community radio, and right. like radio is in like, just, just we, well, Anything but national, mm. local, regional, like actual paid for radio, like community, okay. community radio, uni radio, college radio. That's some funny moments. Yeah. Some, 
Um, I remember speaking to a guy once. I was asking him. Oh, it was guy. This is a rapper. He works on. He does a lot of stuff on Market Street, giving out his CDs. Oh, I think I saw a clip of this. Yeah. And he, he's quite. He's quite funny in that. In that sense. And I remember uh, when we were going through the. We we're going through like Would You Rather. Um, or never have I ever with what we're playing, not would you rather? And I, I, we, I, I just, I, I thought like, because I don't want to ask him, just never have I ever kissed someone else while I was with my partner. Because that's, that's, I don't really care if he's done any of that yeah. stuff. Like, I, I'm not really bothered. So we got, we just asked him weird questions, and I asked him, I asked him, I, I got to, through a couple, and I got to the last one, and I just looked at him like, okay, and I went, so like, would you, like, never have I ever sat down in a shower? Like right, to yeah, wash yeah. yourself, and he just oh. he just looked at me with like the straightest face. It was like, what? <laughs> was that like just something you thought of in the moment, or was that on script? <laughs> it was just. I, found, yeah. I think my friend found it on like a Buzzfeed website, and was like, "You will ask, we'll ask him this." <laughs> was it just in your ear, but, mate? Tell him this; it'll be hilarious. I said, well, he would produce me at the time, and he put the, put the paper towards uh, me. There's like, a lot yeah. of questions. I was All looking at like, like, okay, <laughs> we'll yeah. ask that question. Mate. It was funny in the end because people, mm. when you listen to that stuff, you think well, that's not what I've usually heard. Like. Yeah. This is completely derailed now. Mm. Uh, this isn't like, because you go into an interview expecting different things. Yeah. They, as soon as they think this is completely derailed now, like you can say anything. Yeah, man. Um, of course, there's like different kind of, well, I mean, the thing that why podcasts, I think, have become so more prevalent is because I like intimacy. You can maybe talk about things in depth more than, like we said, podcasts with these um, radio with the segments and stops and breaks. I think that's what's interesting. Um, my last episode I had on the guest was Polyamorous, right? And she, that was incredible because I could just talk to her for like two hours. Like instead of... Uh, Let's give, for example, um, like BBC Morning or something like that, where you give someone five or four minutes to explain such a, like a complicated point. And I think that's why I'm, what I like about podcasts is also you get to see someone who you might think, oh, that person's really right wing. All of a sudden you see, oh, he's actually, you know, I've listened to him for 20 minutes. He's actually quite a sound person. You talk about both sides of the story. I think that's what's so amazing about it and why, why I like it so much. You get, to learn, you get to learn a lot more about, you get to learn a lot. You get to be in the conversation with them yeah to sit yeah. there with them while they're mm. talking about just how they'd speak to their friends or their family yeah. no i was in the shop today right and i had this amazing chat i work in a convenience shop uh and uh the, these three women come in and she, she's like oh i think my baby is a child <laughs> i think my baby is a girl because my hump is on the top half of my body the amount of like kind of just wife's tales that was just told in that next five minutes amazed me i just listened do you hear all this stuff like the amount of myths around like births and stuff yeah I've heard it. there's a lot of just stuff where everybody just says it and you just go oh that's true i i guarantee 99 percent of it is just bullshit that people just wife's tales man i heard that if you eat basically the way babies are made this is this is biology is this true on yeah the podcast right now yeah uh, I heard that. So what happens is uh, one day the mummy and the daddy okay. decide they're gonna make a cake. They okay. just put the ingredients in. They're, right. gonna make, they're making a. They're not making any old cake. Though. They're making a baby cake. Okay. Oh, any... no, I, I don't know what the specifics ingredients. Oh, are you don't know. No. Cake. I'm guessing okay. it's where you create your own thing. You put whatever right. you want in it. You know, so spice, yeah. everything nice. Some homemade ingredients. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, yeah. Possibly. Some, well, some home, that's yeah. going into. Yeah, that's going into the darker sides of <laughs> yeah, making yeah. children. But um... they're not going to Tesco to get these ingredients, right? <laughs> you go. You go. <laughs> Don't get these ingredients on Tesco. They, <laughs> they make the cake, they stir all the ingredients, whatever, they, they eat the cake. Right. And once they're done eating the cake, Nam's later baby comes out. Right, okay. But only the girl eats the cake, which will be quite fuming now as a as a yeah. guy who helped make the cake so much and the, the woman eats the cake and she is, it. she is pregnant for nine months afterwards, so jokes True. on her. Yeah, I think I'd rather not eat the cake and not go through the nine months, to be fair. Mm. I think the guy is probably better off. Um, do you ever think, like, when... Like there's so many things that goes into a birth and like what it has taken for you to be here where you are now. Do you ever think about like how improbable that is? Like, I, that's I, I often gloat that I was the, the fastest sperm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't know any of the other sperm, so I can't I can't brag to anyone because everyone else was a fastest sperm too. You don't know what they're up to now. They may be doing something good with their lives. I mean, or they the could dead. just they could just be in some tissue probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it no. make it. That's what happened to him. Yeah, man. No, I, uh, <laughs> another thing one of them was saying was like, oh, yeah, um, if you have faster swimming sperm, 
um, you're more likely to have a, a a boy because the 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 male sperm. There was just so much. Like I feel like when you're at work, the amount of bullshit that just gets like kind of dealt with to pass the time. Like nobody calls each other out because they're just like, yeah, I can't be asked. Like it is hilarious. I I'm mostly one of the people who just listen, but uh, it's it's fucking funny. Yeah, yeah. You do hear a lot of things. Yeah, Rita. You do hear a lot. You also hear. You also have to answer a lot of silly questions. You, you ever worked in retail? I worked in yeah, I worked in retail when like, I was sixteen. I worked yeah, for yeah. like six years in retail. How you find that? It was it was crazy. I went through everything. I went through the home. I went through all. I saw. I was at um, home bargains for four years. Mm. Worked at um, <clears throat> Tesco's for about a year. Okay. Just about. I, I'd say just short of a year. And then they were they were like, okay, well, so we're, we're gonna. I've, I've been there. I've, okay. I've been there nearly a year. Right. Like I went there from Christmas. I was there nearly a year. And they were like. Okay, we're gonna get rid of all our temps. Ah. So I was, I was, I was like, what is it? I was, de- I want to say deported. I don't think deported. Nah, I feel. Like- what is it? So like, I was, I was exiled to, yeah, to yeah. one stop. I was exiled. To oh one wait, stop. they transferred you? No, no. Oh, uh, uh, well, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were getting an easy. I thought I transferred. I, well, uh, I, I messaged up. Well, I, I applied for a job at one stop after I found out the news. Right. We're like, gonna get rid of all temps. So I'm got no job. Yeah. Just moving to somewhere else. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll go to one stop. Mm. And then I went to One Stop thinking, because One Stop's owned by Tesco. Right, yeah. Went yeah. to One Stop and they were just like, well, we carried on working as normal. And then Tesco would, would put me down as that I'd gone AWOL. Wow. So <laughs> saying, that, yeah. saying I was like not even... Damn. Saying I'd, just, I'd, I'd been in the company, i just disappeared from the company. Damn. And never come back. Well, actually, I worked at their like sister company, which is One Stop. Uh, right, so they just thought you were meant to be turning up to work and you're like, where the fuck is this guy? And then you yeah, were just yeah, actually just yeah. working another place. I think- yeah. I, I, well, in my defense, I thought. Well, in their defense, actually, I didn't tell them. <laughs> but in my defense, I thought I thought they were gonna. I thought <laughs> I thought the one stop were gonna tell them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, that's not were, my problem. It's the same country. It's not my. It's the same yeah. company. Sorry, it's not my problem. Yeah. No, for sure. No, I get that. I think. Um, I, did you prefer that that vibe of you know Tesco is like a big um, you know supermarket, then you're going into like a, a petrol station. You know, one stop sometimes petrol station, sometimes corner shop. I prefer that, just like less customers, there's less expectation. Uh, that's what I prefer for mm. my. <laughs> what did you? How did you? That... It was because di- di- I, I come from a home bargain. It wasn't quite. It wasn't a big home bargain. Yeah, so mm. you could still chat chat to people going yeah. around, but I felt like you had more. I feel like you were less of a like. Tesco's a mega store. Yeah, you, you're in Tesco. It's um, it, like it was like a five minute walk from one end to the other. Yeah, so like effort. Right? No one know, no one knows where you are really mm. in that building. So you you do you just get along. You sort of get yeah. on with your work. Time to close finishes and you, yeah. you go home. Same in similar in one stop, except there's just a lot crazier people coming to one stop. Oh yeah, for sure. There's so many different varieties of people in there. <laughs> I feel like sometimes when I go for a Tesco shop, I should track my steps. Like honestly, getting the steps to be fair. But you are right, the amount of like insane people you see in corner shops. I don't know why. It's maybe just because you get like the local people and they're maybe just like more comfortable. So there's like a more like real version of them. My first shift, um, one of my jobs was being at Sainsbury's local, a convenience shop. This guy comes in, I didn't know at the time, but he was like a regular, comes in like doing this really shit like Jose Mourinho impression. You know, uh, is that the right name? The yeah. yeah. <laughs> comes in like doing this really shit like European accent. And I'm just like, I know it's shit. And I know that's not his real accent. So I'm just kind of talk him, talking to him like with this face, like a really worried face. And like he kept at it the whole time. And it was like the weirdest first day of my life. All these like regulars were fucking with me because they knew I was new. Mm. And that they must have had not much to do in their day because who the fuck does like I don't know. I, I felt like quitting after that first day, man. They were all just like fucking fucking with my politeness. Like cause they know yeah, I was gonna say yeah. shit, right? That's 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 the thing with small small places. I mm. worked like it was almost like a corner stop one stop. Yeah. It was it's just everyone was so familiar. Everyone felt so comfortable there, and mm. it does get to the point where it's a little bit too comfortable. Yeah, a little bit too. I, I, it's like people coming in and being like, people buying like a lot of food, and people yeah. going to me it's like, oh, it's alright, because I'm gonna go home and smoke a Ben later. I was like, yeah. Well, I, well, I was, I was like, smoke, like the cats is sixteen, so well, first of all, young lady, what is a Ben? <laughs> yeah. What name is a Ben? What's a ben? <laughs> what is, your, what that is? is that your son? <laughs> like, what's, what the fuck's a Ben? Turn, right? Turns out it's just another word for a joint. But yeah. It's yeah. like well. Yeah, you know what? I know you're underage, so yeah. how, about I call, how about I tell the police about that? Yeah. Um, you... And then I, there was some guy who used to come in a lot. Mm. Um, not come in. He'd come in, not so not come in. But he like just, 
you'd have this massive court on. Yeah. Like this huge rain court. And he just he had nothing on underneath. Oh, nothing. What? And he was he was always open. Was and he a flasher guy? Was yeah, he like I don't I don't I think he was he was on a heavy amount of something. Oh, <laughs> it so was like yeah. Something he was he was not something he was taking was not right. Not quite yeah. prescribed by the doctor. Yeah, and man. Look at like when when he when when that's coming in. Mm. When that's coming in and around this shop. And there's yeah. a potential this guy's gonna walk in. Yeah. And there's children coming in the shop. He's like, it's like, oh, I just, this, I don't need this. I don't want to mong out and not, yeah. not think about my job. I've got to yeah. actually sit down and <laughs> make sure this weird. I don't get in. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to be thinking about. It. You're like minimum wage. You don't want to be thinking about a guy's cock coming out in the shop. I mean, with those big trench coats, I think of that a flasher, or I think of like a drug dealer. Mm. Like there's a classic thing. Like you want any of this. But I've never actually met, come into contact with those guys yet. I thought living in Manchester, I would have been offered something from a trench coat by now. It's, but not yet. That's quite a humber side mentality. mentality <laughs> because <laughs> you can tell that you, you tell that you're like someone sat you around a campfire yeah. and was like, so this is how you get drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I just thought I usually just chill around like certain areas until someone approaches me. That's kind of how I would do it if I was. But, uh, you know, I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy. I don't do that. Um, yeah, I think with shops like that, man, it's just there are some people who don't have a lot of social life outside their work. So, like, a cu customer-facing person like us, maybe behind the till, they'll just talk to you, especially mm. if it's not busy. Or sometimes there'll be a massive queue, and these people will just talk so unaware. Like, you know there's, like, five people behind you? I, I find it incredible the discrepancy in social awareness between people and i think now with our generation especially with just the amount of distractions it's getting fucking worse man mm. like just no one knows what's going on about around them because they've either got headphones in they've got other shit going on i don't know do you feel that I don't yeah know. yeah i feel that but i feel like yeah i feel like as a concept like as a contrast like the the, the people speaking to you that's still that's quite I, I prefer that than like yeah. someone coming up with just headphones on and then just be like, mm. okay, I'll, I'll have this. Like, that's fine. I yeah. don't mind. I'm not going to be like, but I prefer, yeah. like, I don't mind a bit of a chat with somebody. I yeah. don't mind, like, especially when you're working on radio and you listen to people calling in. I, yeah. I love having a chat with people. No, I'm, I no. just think there's just, just have as much fun as you can. Just no, do whatever 100%. you need to do. I think with that, yeah, that kind of nihilistic view of, I think there has been phases where I'm like, yeah, there's no point to anything. But I think, like, if you think that too much and you go down that rabbit hole too much, then you're like, what even matters, right? So it's like hard. Cause like mm. you can think that uh, like you have the classic Rick and Morty, you've the character um, Rick, of course is the epitome of that, isn't it? Mm. But just like, I don't know. I, I suppose the only thing that really matters for me is like family and friends. I, I suppose, I hope I would never get to a point in my nihilism where I would neglect them. But I get what you mean. Like, no, it's not. I don't, yeah. I would say it's not really any no point to anything but that's that's the that's the best part there's no yeah. you don't have anything really to do you can no. not like especially in this country you're not there's yeah. no, like specific goal especially if you're just on your own yeah no kids nothing like that you you just you can literally do whatever you you can carve whatever you want out of yeah. nothing no exactly i think that's what's amazing about um countries which have so much freedom like this country i, mean, I think we're very fortunate to um well like i said before like the chances that we're here now born where we are what we're able to do I feel like just having the the t the free time just to do this is insane. Mm. Like and uh, that's that's just I think that's yeah it's better than better than needing everything and like yeah. needing a goal. I think it's better for happiness. I think better yeah. for well being. Just like forget mm. about forget about there even being a meeting. It doesn't matter. Yeah, some people need that though. Like mm. some people look, think of uh, COVID. People went insane because they didn't have that. They were our job. They didn't have a structure. I feel like. The majority of people need structure. They need something to do. They need somebody to tell them something to do mm. for like this whole thing to fucking function. To be honest, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I felt that a lot. Like the the system sort of cracked in half at that point. It's like, well, wait, hang on. Like, I, even I felt like I, I've been doing this one thing for so long, mm. and I've been forced for it like six months to sit down and just think about what I'm doing yeah. and not do anything. It's so it's so like great. So it's like, well, I don't want to do this. I want to get out. I want to just carry on mindlessly doing the things I would do mm. anywhere. Yeah. No, it is. I I think I've spoke about this before. I, I'm very much like extreme in the fact that I, I look at the bigger picture too much or I look too small into something like in the way that like I could be doing my work and I'll be so engrossed in it for like five hours. But then like for the rest of the evening, I'm like not even thinking about myself. I'm thinking about like bigger issues, this or that. Yeah, no, it is interesting. I think 
right now where what what is on all of our minds is like so much um wider because we we're so much more where we receive so much different information through social media and all the problem like 500 years ago the only problems you know about is people like in your community now mm. like you're worrying about ukraine you're worrying about like what the fuck's biden doing dude like what's going on you know everyone's got so many more worries i feel yeah. like or like variety of words you know a lot more you know a lot more what's going on yeah but it, I, I, like this is another, that's another thing that I, like, I feel like got us in covid is we would we were supposed to stop and like actually see what's actually happening and that was that was like whoa <laughs> the, yeah. the world's a bit rubbish um and it just mm. wait, we knew it was rubbish anyway it just, i feel like it just got more we mm. realized more and more that it was actually like way worse than what we thought were going to happen 100%. or what was going on at the time mm. um so I feel like, yeah, I feel like there was a lot of character development in, yeah. in COVID. A lot of people changed for the yeah. better. That's the thing, though. Like, in the moment, you know, we've got these natural disasters. You've got things like COVID. In the moment, you don't really realize, like, the actual what is going on. Like, it's hard to realize because, of course, the research hasn't come out. You know, in COVID, we didn't know what was going to happen. I think the important thing is after these things happen, we look at what has actually happened. Like, you've got... Um, what happened in the UK, which wasn't great, you know, the the whole <laughs> political party um, Tories going against the rules they set. They had a um, a party in number ten. Um, it's just like looking back and going, who actually fucked up? And it's fine to have fucked up, but I think the fact that like with a politician, if you're if in your party and if you admit you made a mistake, th you never see that. You never see someone mm. going, look, we made a mistake here. And I think that's maybe the problem with like maybe why there's like a disconnect between politicians and uh, young people now is like it's not really how a normal person would act. They're looking in the best interest of the party. They can't say they fucked up because that makes the pie look bad. Uh, do you go? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And it's it's we a politician is is so much more difficult because I, I could never do it. Like mm. every uh, humans make mistakes. Humans yeah. like go through go for everything you can you know one's perfect yeah a politician it feels like you, you i do feel like sometimes you kind of got to be perfect yeah and I don't, I, that's why I, I, I try and turn as much of a blind eye to it yeah as, I, you got to understand it like, you can't escape but you got to understand politics mm. and you got to understand what's going on who to vote for and this and the other but in terms of that drama it's sort of like I, you i don't I, I don't like it i don't I, no. it's just it stresses me out especially for the like i like when i know someone's done wrong and i'm like well that's not good, is it? Well done, you you've messed up. But I'm also yeah. like, well, that's such a stress for them. Yeah, like they're a better stress is so. But but then like within right reason, it's you know I mean you a very sensitive job. It's just yeah, you got to think so much about what you're doing mm. in such a situation like that. That I feel like I I, I wouldn't imagine the stress. Mm. I feel like we do need people like you though, who just like listen, guys. Like this is <laughs> just like blatant honesty would be so refreshing. I mean. And you've also got uh, Labour, which feels like constantly their promotion of their party is uh, belittling the other party, which I, I know is a common strategy that has been used, you know, for years now. But that's just in interesting because, like, it, it's just like it it just seems so unproductive in some ways. It's set up and for our history. And, uh, and I feel like that's why, like, a lot of it, like, young people are struggling to, like, d connect with them and why you see, like voting rates are so low like incredible and i think there's reasons behind that and in some ways like young people maybe need to stick their thumb out a bit more but a lot of it is explainable i feel like yeah it's, it's not like it's, it's a bit of a war zone at the minute i mean yeah like you're telling us to vote but vote for who like, yeah i don't know what I the like, fuck's going on I, mean, I, I love andy burnham i like i, I, I like what he's doing but mm. like <laughs> I don't really like what the others are doing. So, what yeah. do I can I not just just vote for vote for Burnham or can yeah. I do other stuff in terms of like can I vote? I can't, I can't, I can't vote for any other parties because yeah. only two parties are actually real. <laughs> only two Did parties you... that actually like can do can will actually be up there. Yeah, yeah, true, true. There is that. Uh, I think the first Instagram post I saw on your Instagram actually was you like holding a mic with a what was it? Was it the Manchester Mayor or something? Oh, the Mayor Grip. Well, you were like, uh, we'll pop it up on screen now if you're okay with it. Can you tell me the context behind that? You were like holding a mic up to like some sat, sort of... It looks like I'm doing something really important, doesn't it? Yeah, I was actually, it does. I was actually doing work experience. Oh, really? I was just doing work experience at college. Yeah. Um, and at this... Basically, so my college, it was it was a bit rough. Like, it was it was good, the course I was doing, VSET Media, but yeah. then we got these we got these people in 
um, and they were the good teachers, and we, we a lot of reshuffling. Then eventually, we got this one guy that was called Dave, and he was really good. Okay. He took us out to all these different places to get different bits of experience. Damn. He offered experience out, and then shout one of them, out Dave, the, man. Yeah, shout out to Dave, and then mm. one of them with the like the um, No Power Women Awards, and he was like, <laughs> oh, you know, a couple of students come down just to yeah. do a couple of interviews, and I just thought well, that's easy. I'll do yeah. that, and that was. Good. Obviously, got to interview the mayor of Greater Manchester. I asked him a question. I don't know what I asked him. Oh, but. yeah. But, like, do you remember, like, I know obviously it's not a politician, but, like, that kind of energy? Like, you've yeah, got yeah, mayors. Yeah. Like, what what kind of energy? Like, did you feel like you could sit down and have a drink with him? Like, do you... In, in different moments, yeah. I've met, I've, I've, I've spoken to Mr. Burnham a few times since. I've, yeah. met, I've met him a few times. Um, yeah. Good vibes? I like, I like yeah. I, like, I, I get the vibe from I can go for a trip pie with him. I yeah. Think I, I could go for a pie with Andy Burnham, but... <sighs> He's, I, I recognize he got different busy lives. And yeah, they got to put on, they got to put on a front. And I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I'll ever know who a politician is underneath like what they put out to me. Yeah, that's the thing. I'd love to get one drunk and just I, obviously I probably wouldn't be able to tell anyone what they said, but that'd be insane. Just like cutting all the bias and all the bullshit. Just look, this happened. We fucked up here. This is good. Yeah, that's fucked, man. Um. Yeah, I I think I'd uh, love to hear them conversations like like fuck what are we gonna do with these rails? Yeah, what are we that, gonna do with this network rail because it's not looking good. <laughs> there's a there's a drama that's just come out, or maybe a couple of weeks ago now. It was called Partygate, and it was actually like a parody of what was based on true events. What was going on in Number Ten during COVID and the part the actual party they had while lockdown was happening? Insane! I'd actually recommend watching it. It was quite funny, actually. Um, this one lady comes in as a, like a new person right during like when they fucked up and we'll go. and uh, yeah, it's it that was kind of a way of kind of educating me. And I know I know it was kind of probably dramatized, but I think that's something I really like about the UK: our ability just to take the piss out of like politicians and uh, the freedom of speech, just to like say you disagree with something. I think that's something we take for granted a lot, mm. like that that's what our culture is kind of based on taking the piss out of each other to be honest it's just yeah it's just the the not not taking yourselves too seriously mm. no optimism it's just it's just funny because it's rubbish <laughs> yeah yeah i think boris johnson you know you i, I kind of like in the moment those <laughs> those pms who were just like hilariously bad I, they're better than like just a bang average one because at least like you get a little laugh during the day right you turn on the news ha huh, that made me laugh yeah we're all in the shit but for five seconds, that made me laugh. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's very, he's, he's a very memeable. He's, he's funny to look at from that perspective. Obviously, like when you go into like the, the deeper stuff of what they're doing with policy, it's yeah. like, oh, okay, yeah. you're a bit weird. You're a bit, you're a bit weird, are you? Yeah. But like, yeah, I know what you mean. There's quite comical people that do go into office, yeah. like. I thought the time when Boris Johnson and Donald Trump were in charge of the two yeah. biggest two. Like, like, what's going on? Yeah, he was like, okay. Am well. I living in a film? Like, what is <laughs> actually going on? <laughs> what did he say? We're like, put, put, yeah, can we not drink antiseptic like liquid? No, we can't, Boris. No, no, we can't. No, we can't, Donald. No, we can't. <laughs> I think at one point, Boris Johnson was encouraging people not to have sex. Yeah. I may be having wrong, that wrong there. I said that in front of my, a few of my mates, and they were like, no, we didn't. I was like, oh, that is an actual thing he said. Don't have sex. I was like, okay, Boris, like you're just making one. Everyone would go even more crazy. Imagine if no one can't stop that. Like everyone's relationships would fuck up. Like that is <laughs> can't stop that, Boris. Boris, you can't stop that. They right? were, I were hearing all sorts of horror stories, because I, I, I like, Corby dropped just when I I only been with my girlfriend for like a few months. Damn. Uh, and I was like, I, I was got Corby dropped, so they were like, yeah. Well, now what? Now now yeah. I do it. And then people were like, oh, Boris. Boris gonna come into your bedroom if you're going having sex with her. Yeah. If you go meet up with you and, sh and shag yeah. her or something like, she's gonna come into your bedroom and chop yeah. your willy off. Like, oh, Boris, yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. do that to me. Imagine if there was another lockdown. The effort to keep us restricted and the reality of people not listening at all. I reckon there would be so much outroar. Like, I doubt it'd happen again. It's interesting. Um, it's actually like, how do you think that would go down? And also like. Was that hard on your relationship? Like, uh, did you did you not see her that often? Like, did you have to just like see it? Like, you probably didn't see her often, right? Yeah, well, we broke up like uh, oh, not not in, not in the not in fuck there. Fuck you, broke, Boris. Broke, fuck <laughs> you, Boris. <laughs> it was broke up after COVID. But <laughs> <laughs> girlfriend was at the time. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but we good. broke up after COVID. Um, Damn. Like after a year. But okay. Young look, young love doesn't young last. Love. No, young that's love true, man. Doesn't last long. Nah, sometimes. man. Sometimes no. it does. Sometimes, sometimes it does. does. Yeah, I don't know. There's that whole head of a heart thing. I think. What What do you do? Okay, you've got it. You maybe have had this. You've got a mate, right? You're a good mate with him, but his girlfriend isn't it. 
Oh, right? his girlfriend, this. isn't it? So um, I'm your friend, right? Mm-hmm. I've recently started going on with a girl, and she's not right for me. But you can see I'm getting taken advantage of. You you've sat down. Me and you were alone at a party. What mm-hmm. start? How do you start? And where does Ooh. it go? Well, I, I, you know what? Right after my experience with Edward, my I, my first response should be just leave you to it. Get gone. You know, go, go what, have, leave me to the have, relationship. Go and have therapy afterwards. That would be my. <laughs> what you wouldn't even like give me in a context. I, like... I would obviously I would. But last time I did anything like that, I, I had a friend that was getting treated rubbish and yeah. like. He, he, his girlfriend were coming around, they were fighting, and then she were coming around just to like sit with us and make him a little rubbish while she was like, he, he's in his room, he's like, well, that's not very good. So I, t- I tell him about it, I'm like, yeah, your girlfriend's a wrong one, yeah. don't like her, get Damn. rid. Um, and then like, instead of just like being reasonable, he just drove to his girlfriend's house and told her yeah. everything. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, so he like didn't listen to you at all? No, no, like, yeah. no, no, he didn't listen to us at all. So that's that's my experience with her. Yeah, with it's people hard that... though, right? Because they're so emotionally invested in it. I think when you're in a relationship, you struggle to see it through someone else's eyes. And also if it's like a first relationship, you've got nothing to compare it to. Like that's hard as well. Like yeah, you, yeah. You... I suppose he's, he's, he's different. He's, different people have different choices anyway. Yeah, but man, that's if you, hard. If you're, happy, if you're happy where you yeah. are, like you just you protect your peace. Like you have every right to do that. Yeah. People looking in will say different stuff, but mm. at the end of the day, like no one's really you, are they? No one no. knows how you what you want. Hundred percent. But like, so if a sir, you're a good mate gets a girlfriend, they're not a good hang. Sorry, Steve, I can no longer see you two. You might lose mates. Yeah, uh, I like yeah, it's it's upset. Like I have lost mates through that stuff, but. It's, wow. It's it's not it's it's just life like yeah I mean, if people weren't meant to be in your friend life like in, in your friend group like in your life then yeah it's just not worth it. You are kind of a person who a lot of the stuff on your social media or the shit I've seen anyway is like based around like you trying food. I think I actually saw one video of you trying a ginger shot. Could we give that a quick watch? Yeah, go on then. Because I'm going to be honest, mate, it looked like a little shot at me. When when I know you didn't know me, but I watched that video. I was like, Ooh. is this guy trying to disrespect me a little bit? And I'll show you. After watching this video, <laughs> you let me know what you think. It's basically you doing a ginger shot. Let me. Is it on your reels? Let me find it. Go on. Uh, oh, here it is. Right, okay. You, you could probably see it on the screen now as well. We've got a ginger shot. I don't know if I want to do a shot of ginger before I do the almonds, but I mean, the almonds are just almonds. This is just ginger. What are the instructions for this? I'm guessing to shake it, give it a bit of... Oh! Oh, it's spicy! Oh, that is ginger, all right. Oh! This is the end. Oh, you got to be a tough nut to have that. Now, I know it was obviously you talking about the, sh- the taste, right? But I felt, as a ginger person, a little bit attacked after that. Not going to lie, mate. Is this, is this why I was brought here? So you can <laughs> put the worlds to right. I'll be honest, if that has anything to do with gingers, if that's if that's even your piss, that is vile. That was disgusting. <laughs> I, want, I, don't know, I, want, I want everyone to know that's my opinion. <laughs> no, no. I love how you backed it there. I was testing you. It's obviously, I didn't think I... But I found that funny as fuck that uh, you did a short ginger. I mean... I just see people necking them a lot now. Just like, he- I guess it's healthy, right? A- anything that's like remotely healthy, usually not tasty on its own. So uh, like, yeah, it's, it's some, no, some, some I, stuff. I, I disagree. I think yeah, I think there's there's a lot of stuff that is healthy that is like that is really nice, and you you could like there's so much stuff that is healthy that is real. I feel like there's a lot of punishment though in healthy. Things. Yeah, like it, like that ginger, like sh- probiotic stuff or like gut health stuff. Like stuff like that is amazing for you, but usually in that moment it was rank, right? That's mm. rank. No, I just found that funny as you said, like a ginger person. That <laughs> I was just watching that. We're like, what the fuck? No, um, if you didn't know, so he makes a lot of content about um, food and stuff. I've got a new flavor of uh, Walker's crisps, or if you're in America, Ooh. they're called Lay's. Now, um, give him a little whiff, mate. Oh, or should I just make you taste it? Or I think we just let you taste it. Like, just, just let me, just let me taste it. I, I have a confession. I don't, I, I don't have a strong sense of smell. So oh, okay, to, you so got that long COVID in you. I wouldn't even be, yeah, I wouldn't even be able to, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to give it a whiff. <laughs> yeah. So here are the bowl of crisps, mate. Go on, take, take, take one of them, and uh, let's let's see. Okay. Get, guess the flavor first of all. I want to see your reaction. So I got a crunch in there. Go on then, mate. Okay. 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 Well, first of all, what, what, what do you think? That t- what are your first reactions to that? Let me give it here. Um, oh, my he first likes re- him. He's keeping oh, him. Oh, oh, yeah. I'll put him. I'll put him. <laughs> I didn't know where you put it. I'll put him on the side. Um, I don't... They taste like barbecue. 
the black, really? the black, t- the black packet of walkers. Remember that? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The black but or um, Thai sweet chili sensations. Ooh, this is a new flavor, and would it? I'll give you a little c- cr- clue. Um, it's around Christmas, so it's something to do with Christmas. Ooh, is it bigs in blankets? <sighs> nah, it's a new flavor that's come out this year. Right, that I'll get the packet if you don't believe me, because I don't think you're gonna believe me. It's Christmas pudding. How? That what Christmas pudding does not taste like that. No. I tasted them, and like, that's cinnamon, isn't it? Like, it tasted, like, really sweet. Really weird, right? So I'll get the packet, packet later, but that's so odd, right? That is strange. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, like, <laughs> Christmas pudding, I thought, like, dog, I thought instantly, I thought, oh, a bit of barbecue here, a bit, bit like... bit barbecue, yeah. A bit of, like, a bit of tang in there, but not, not sweet, like, almost like a cheese and onion tang. I didn't yeah. think it was... I didn't think he was that. Maybe maybe I, like, going into it, knew the flavor was Christmas pudding. So then you, like, kind of go, oh, that's kind of. But you're right. It kind of just tastes a bit barbecue Do you feel like that's Walker's thing now? To stay... They've just coming out with outrageous stuff every year now. What were your that's, thoughts? That's, I, that's what my eyes. That's, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's... um. I, I now I'm going to be very cautious about, like, Mate. especially Chris. Just... You can say anything. Yeah. You can say they were anything. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of like they probably like have just stuck Christmas pudding there, but there's probably nothing. It just tastes sweet. Like, I don't know. But I just thought I'd give it. That feels like you, that. Like, you trying that. That's kind of like you. I thought I'd help you in your brand. That's manage. brilliant. That is well done. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I, 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 the thing is, with food, I only start off with, I feel like I start off food because you feel like there's a couple of places you can start off with when making content but it's just yeah. like a, it's a good subject i think no it is because like everybody is i think in england as well like meal deals are a big thing like not really in many other countries but we we love a sandwich we love a packet of crisps in the uk and yeah we love um well the drinks are kind of similar to you but i think what's so amazing about unique about the uk is this thing about sandwich and crisps that's what most people are having for for lunch what you could put on a, between two sauces yeah bread. like insane like you could have anything but we're having bread and like or sometimes we put crisps in buddy sandwiches bro put crisps in sandwiches put noodles in sandwiches instant yeah. noodles put <laughs> pies in sandwiches yeah that one is insane i went to bolton i think what the fuck are they you doing never, you, you mean, never had it never had it no why the fuck would i have a sandwich in a pie this That's is my like, question. It's, it is so good right Wait, you right so you'd go to a restaurant right menu anything you'd pick that yeah oh, no 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 okay okay no, no, no. i would not go to a restaurant no that is crazy <laughs> talk i'd eat that in the depths of my room like right yeah in a dark room yeah. nobody's looking at you <laughs> Yeah, like literally, like in your un- that's the something you eat in your underwear. Yeah, yeah. My for sure. friend who my friend lives in Manchester has yeah. never had one. I uh, met him one. He was like, if he, he went to me the next day, he was like, oh, bang, bang in that belt, bit yeah. like some pie butty, bro. I was like, well, that's just, <laughs> it's not like anything new. <laughs> no, 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 but it's new to me. It's definitely new. Do you know what? There's, not pe- there's people who haven't had that. I think that's the sort of food that's good if you're hungover. Like there's certain hungover food that I just wouldn't go near if I was sober. Like, just carbs is great, right? Like, uh, what else is good? Like, McDonald's, number one hungover food. What else? Like, a greasy pizza, they're good. Ooh, like, uh, like Chips, cheese, and gravy. Oh, fuck. Yeah, gravy's fucking... That's something that I'm glad... Uh, I'm originally from East Yorkshire near Hull. Now I've come over to Manchester. Something that I'm, good, I'm glad you guys have kept. Like, I'm glad we're not, you know, a London where, you know, asking for gravy on chips, they look at you weird. I'm glad... I felt welcomed in that way when I'm yeah, yeah, over here, you know? Very, oh yeah, it's very working class Manchester. Yeah, it's good, yeah. No, um, I think like, even talking to like, local people as well, like how gentrified the city's got now as well, like how it's kind of, like, what do you think about it? It's, it's low-key about to come like another London. Like, don't you feel that as well? Like, especially in the, like, the centre and like mm. the way things are going. Like, if you want to live somewhere cheap now people are moving to leeds dude really like, well a lot especially like companies as well now like a lot of uh production companies i know and now even going to leeds because it's cheaper right oh, well, i didn't know they were moving to leeds you go to about... northern quarter in manchester it's just southern accents like <laughs> it's fun no, no. so in some way like there's a lot of um manchester is becoming big now and in a, and of course that means prices are going up right i so. think since the, since the 90s uh um, yeah since the 90s everyone's wanted to be from manchester yeah everyone if you're from manchester you just you just live in your best life you're yeah you, you on top of the world it's be- best city in the world i don't blame people for mm. wanting to come down to manchester yeah. Um, I'd, 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 something about Manchester, I think is, is worth it, but mm. I don't think it's going to be, 
I don't think it's going to be too overrun with no. southern people, with southern that, accents and people. Not, 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 not it's necessarily just southern people, but like like p- people with quite high incomes that are quite rude about it. Yeah, I think there's a nice feel. Like you go into the centre, but there's not. I haven't experienced snobby the level of snobbiness. Sometimes I work mm. down in, in London for work, and you see that. But uh, I think as well, it's just like kind of it still feels homely, like from where I'm from. But there's just more like it's better for work. It's better better for my social life. To be fair, I mean, I moved here just before my twenties. But one thing I kind of wanted to finish it off is like kind of a, a segment I wanted to call is, um, you, you know, we'll see. I want to get your rating as, you know, you've made several segments. This is like things that ever since I've become 20 or started in my 20s that are no longer appealing to me. Like in my in my late teens, I was like, this is the shit, right? These five things just become non-interested to me. I want to I want to see if you agree. First one, clubs, going to clubs. Oh, yeah. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, clubs are a weird one. Clubs are because st- I, I, I like going away. I love a club. Yeah. But as you get, as you do get older, yeah. I, like you sort of realize like, what what actually is the point of this mm. club? Because like you, you like uh, sometimes a club. You sometimes a club you end up getting like getting off with somebody or you mm. end up meeting some somebody. But even that to me now, like I, I, I think about doing that, and I just think like, wow, like yeah. <laughs> somebody. Coming How old are you? Somebody coming to rest. I'm only 22. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like, we're young. Yeah, we are, we're, we are, yeah. we're in that young bracket. But yeah, still going, <laughs> yeah. still going into town to me now and dancing just yeah. to just to like find somebody else. It's like yeah. it's, yeah, it almost makes me feel ill. I'm like, that's that's yeah. bad. That's bad stuff. Mm. I know. You just I find, I find bars now. I think bars are about the one thing pubs for people. You can spat. You can chat to people. You can chat to each other. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite pubs in Manchester, Pebble of the Peak, very good pub. Or oh, there's this amazing. Uh, well, it used to be just a, a toilet, but uh, this like underground, tiny like tunnel segment in central Manchester. It called it's called Temple. Temple's a good one. Yes, Temple. Fucking good pub, that's right? That's a good, great, great pub. pub. You're always bumping into anyone. It's such a narrow pub that you kind of just like forced to bump into people. And um, yeah, th- that place, Peveril of the Peak, and also <laughs> Night and Day Cafe. Do you know that yeah, place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only place I've been recognized in. <laughs> really? You've been recognized? Weird as fuck. It was on my birthday, right? <laughs> and the reason why I'm saying this is because I thought my mates were having a joke with me. I was with my mates and they were just like, uh, oh, mate, these these couple of lads come in. Can I get a pitch? And I was like, wet through Manchester, right? You know, it's raining all the time. Look like a piece of shit. And I'm looking at them like, guys, like, you're taking the piss, right? Like, I thought they'd been hired by my mates to, like, take the piss. Yeah. Real. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> No, I'm not saying that like like but it was more like I should have enjoyed that moment, but I was like defensive and I was like that could be it's, real. Like, it's hard. I, there's too much of a like a, a thing these days where people like you you got that success and you don't act arrogant about it. But like yeah, yeah it's just it's, it's your first time being reckoned. I think it's I yeah. think it it's wasn't so arrogant, fun. it was defensive. I was like, You yeah. guys are fucking with me, right? That's like, what I mean. No, that's what I mean. But you feel like that, you don't feel like you it's always imposter syndrome. Yeah. Like, it's not like, that's it. like you're not worth but like if you do you're working hard and people come yeah. up to you like, Oh, can I take a picture? I recognize yeah. your work. Yeah. That's fun. That's, no, that's what fun. you should enjoy. Nah, for sure. I think that's something that maybe will just come with time, you know. I yeah, think that's yeah. a lot of things. I think I do get imposter syndrome when I'm in new places. I think I the more I do things like this, um, I've been thinking about maybe trying an open mic at some point, maybe mm. try and do something like that. But yeah, have you got like, what would you say your like outlook on that? Is like doing something new or when you're in like a place of anxiety, maybe not anxiety, but like you're in a new place. How how do you handle that? Oh, I, I get a lot. I get a lot of anxiety. I get a lot of anxiety and possibly yeah. syndrome of like, or well, what am I doing here? Like, I don't yeah. I'm, like, especially when you, I mean, People come from much much more prestigious backgrounds, and you, mm. you're in somewhere that everyone's like knows what they're doing. You sort of yeah. think, like, oh god, I've not, I, 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 I weren't brought this into Mozart. I can't do yeah. this stuff. But then, like, it's literally just that. It's just imposter mm. syndrome. You like, you can enjoy stuff like that. Mm. Uh, another one we've got. So things that are no longer appealing to me in, in my twenties is watching reality TV. Now, mm. I, I, I could very much work on it. I, I, I know there's a place for it. There's a there's obviously a market for it. But all of a sudden, like, I've kind of uh, become, like, less interested in, like, celebrity culture, maybe, like, more into, like, other things. I don't know why, but how do you feel about that? Uh, are you still a big, like, Big Bro- Big Brother's just come out? Like I, I've been watching a bit of Big Brother here and there. I don't have a lot of time to watch TV. Edit. Like, 
I, 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 I sort of like discriminate. I don't watch what I don't watch much TV. Ah, so anyway, it's like TV so in general. I, I, I watched quite a lot of Love Island when it was on. And yeah. I watched a bit of like Big Brother, but I don't watch it every single night. Yeah. Um, it's one of the things now where I, I'd rather like I'd rather go on Big Brother because it looks it looks fun. It looks <laughs> yeah, crazy. I'd rather do it. that. <laughs> yeah. Also though, you're in there a hell of a long long time, right? I don't know if I could do that. Like that's a big like those people like the mental kind of exhaustion they must have when they're out constantly being recorded. I don't know mm. how. Would I, you do that? Yeah, I'd I'd def. It'd be one of the things like going for about a couple of weeks and then just be like, just okay, like, I, I, yeah, I, I'd yeah, want to go out now. I'm, yeah. I'm bored of this. I want to go back to my house. <laughs> just say some ridiculous stuff so they kick you out. <laughs> like, <laughs> gonna, you can't leave. Every second I'm still here, I'm going to say something horrific. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys you let me go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. So yeah, you kind of semi-agree, but you don't watch TV at all. So that's kind of not applicable. I think another one for me is um, like being on my phone with friends. So like, I think one thing I've stopped myself from doing now is if I'm with like a new person, which I maybe don't know, you know, that classic thing, if it's awkward in a social situation, everybody just goes on their phone or you pretend that's the worst mm. one, right? You know, where you're just like flicking through your home screen, yeah. <laughs> pretending like you're doing something. I'm trying to force myself to not do that. And I think, uh, I think that overall will benefit my social skills over time. Yeah, right? I, 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 everyone does it. I yeah. hate doing it. I hate going up just, yeah. I'm like itching just like, it's yeah. not even anything important. It's nothing mm. that it's sort of like stuff that can wear, but it's like if it, if, it, if it just gets awkward, I, I, yeah, I do feel like I'm always looking, reaching for my phone. But like it's just it's just a case of having things to say and having yeah. having like the observation of just being able to chill. Yeah, it's easy to do that, and I'm trying to force myself not to do it. Right, another one is. <laughs> Right, cheap Airbnbs. Now I have a story about this, but um, I've been working down in London and I'm a bit on a bit of a low budget, so I've been, maybe been skimping a bit on like Airbnbs. I may have been filtering it to cheapest and just booking it and not looking. I have made a couple of dramatic mistakes, right? Go, okay. on, go on, go on. <laughs> Book this one, right? Um, it's this. It's in L Street. A lot of the studios are there. Uh, it looked like a lovely house. Get in there. Actually, quite a nice space. You know, only a single bed. My, you know, it's not an ensuite, but the bathroom's pretty close. I'm going to bed the first night, and um, I fall asleep pretty pretty well. Have you ever been awakened though by a smell? No. Um, probably at three a.m. I got woken up to. What's that? I got woken up to the smell of shit. Oh. And I was like, have I shit myself? Like, what's going on? And then I get up and I check. No, that's not me. And I get close to my door. I was like, that's coming from outside my door. And uh, and then I, I somehow get back to sleep. Like, it's an hour. I spray some deodorant in my room, get back to sleep. I wake up in the morning, open the door. There's toilet paper on splotches of the carpet on the hallway. The dog, th there's just a dog in the Airbnb, and it shat like four times on the floor. I was traumatized. I had to stay there another four nights. What the fuck? I've never been woken up to a smell before in my life, but God, that was horrendous. <laughs> That's no good. These are like, you, you just you just find them every. You just find them like that. That is that is a, that is a golden find, bro. It was a nice stay. There was even like a little gym in the garage, but that threw me off never going there again that's brilliant that is <laughs> dude have you i don't know i've never been woken up to a smell before but it did like just a dog pooing around the airbnb oh, fuck me man and it was oh it's a big dog as well it's not like a poodle man it was a it was like a german shepherd dude. that's the opportunity opportunity <laughs> so that they, if they're pooing on the floor then you can <laughs> yeah you could poo on the floor if you wanted to i don't even bother walking to the floor now i like <laughs> revolt i'm just I've... all right if your dog's gonna <laughs> shit look <laughs> she wakes up opens the door and just kneels down on yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on the carpet, dude. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think he's uh, Airbnbs are crazy, like. But I like. I think it's better when you get like a cheaper one rather yeah. than rather than a big prestigious one. Everything's in place. Everything's foolproof. Yeah. Mm. Like I've stayed in some. I've stayed in some like. I've stayed in some dens. Like so yeah. <laughs> absolutely. What, what's like the worst so, one you stayed in? Uh, London, probably London, because uh, it was it wasn't bad. I was staying behind. Uh, I was staying in Wembley. Okay. Staying um staying behind like some. Some, some bins, shop. <laughs> some shop, <laughs> some shop of non description. Um, and uh, like I, I remember walking in, like the carpet was like, the carpet was all tattered. Yeah, and, like, yeah. The, the floor. My room was really nice. Yeah, my yeah. room was livable, and it, okay. it was like it was great. Like, just in my room, fair enough, it was fine. But like I just thought that like, living in the rest of the house, and I was like, oh, oh. like this is uni. This is the uni house in. Looks like it's been like 
it, it we a knuckle ball or something like he's, he's horrible jesus okay but, uh yeah it, it was fine mm. I, remember, I, I walked out i remember walking out of my room a couple of times i was staying with a lovely asian family oh lovely um first time i opened my door the, one of them waved at me i was oh, about lovely. to go and get some breakfast when i was leaving i waved at some other one it was definitely the same girl and she, she like shut the kitchen door on me i'm like <laughs> bye <laughs> oh, do they ever cook for you i had a one time i had this uh, middle-aged woman who would just cook me dinner every night and it, she didn't even charge me an extra it was amazing Oh she cooked word. me dinner. She was offering me glasses of wine. And that's when I drew the line. She seemed... And then I realized after two days, oh, she's just lonely and she wants people to drink with her. Um, oh. Yeah. It, it was kind of... No, I get that. But it was it was more the fact, like, after um, 10 minutes of talking to her, she dropped the line. Yeah, the last guy who stayed here, um, I slept with. Ooh. Mate, it, I'm in a relationship, by the way, and I wouldn't go there. But why the fuck would you tell me that i'm just like there's no lock on the door as well so i'm just like freaking the fuck out where's his airbnb <laughs> <laughs> i'll drop you the address <laughs> <Where's Airbnb? laughs> hey man, hey man. <laughs> it's actually it was cheap as well but man airbnbs in, if you want a story to tell just stay at random airbnbs stay in someone's like yeah stay in someone's living room or something <laughs> hell, man. yeah no um where I think I've got one more thing on my list um, is, okay, this is a classic one, uh, trains, right? I, I know what you mean. The classic strikes now pissing me off, not going to lie, man. And I know, event, I hope eventually just goes back. But um, basically, I book my trains. Again, I'm a bit of a cheapskate. Have you heard of like train uh, train line where you can get like split save? Yeah. So like you get really cheap tickets. But you know what that means? If one of your trains gets fucked, like cancelled, you are fucked. So how this works is it gives you like individual journeys. Like you're going around. Um, it's not usually direct. It usually takes like double the time because you're going through so many different cities. But it's like considerably cheaper. And there have been so many times where it's just fucked me up and I've had to buy another ticket anyway, <laughs> like especially with the strikes and mm. stuff. So um, I actually got a coach down to London a couple of weeks back and it was it was all right. You know, charges. I've had a coach to London. Uh, I've had sp I've had split save. I didn't know that was the case in split save. <laughs> That's quite maybe quite worried about split. Yeah, save. no, but you, like so split save like it says how many stops like you agree to it mm. but sometimes i don't fully look into oh i'm going through banbury i'm going through fucking this and that like one time <laughs> i think i've got it up on my snapchat story it, it made me like walk from one city to the other end of the city but i had a suitcase and a bag and it threw like a forest man it was like there's My some word. insane shit and I probably should look into this stuff more but the fact that I'm a cheatscape usually puts me in some fuck situations that's like, great though that's that's, <laughs> the better, that's better situation scrapes you gotta look you gotta live for the scrapes yeah man we're, we're, I, I'd say I'm in the scrapes right now I, th I think I've been in scrapes for the, probably the past four years but I like it yeah I, I, there is there's good sides to it Salford for the scrapes there Salford for this, well, that's where we are right now scrapes there like <laughs> everyone's everyone's on the never never everyone yeah, wants to man. make a bit of dough man I think if you just <clears> walk into the precinct the the shopping center we have here you could get several stories you could probably there's probably 10 documentaries waiting to happen from characters in there <coughs> it's it's just it's a great amazing it's a filled great with culture it's lovely sir i i'd recommend any american skip london come here. skip <laughs> edinburgh come straight to salford you know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> no nah, man that was my little rant section but it'll be interesting to see if i still think like agree with any of those in my mid twenties. Yeah, yeah, but uh, some of them you agreed with, some of them you didn't. I, no, I think I agree with most of them. Tra trains, yeah, trains, trains are. I yeah. just, I, 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 sat, I, I was sat on a train like the other day, and I thought, like this, this was a, this was an adventure one day, once upon a time. Now it's a chore. Now I'd rather yeah. just drive up. Yeah, no man. Um, buses are the way. I think, I think buses were just. Uh, it was actually pretty good because um, you just sit there, you don't have to change as you do. But yeah, and they're just like three times cheaper as well. I mean, sure, you probably sat next to you might need to sit someone. But yeah, there we go. There are my things I wanted to um, kind of rant about. Is there anything you kind of want to promote? Anything you want to plug before before we we head out? Uh, well, I mean, if everyone wants to, anyone wants to follow my Instagram, it is uh, Elliot underscore Kieran. Um, I imagine there'd be some sort of graphics. I don't yeah, yeah, it. I'll, I'll put I don't it in the link. Spell, I don't. I won't have to spell that because <laughs> it's uh, it's quite a spelling. Other than that, I mean, I'm, I'm always on radio, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm yeah. Yeah, Radio uh, Radio Manchester, and uh, yeah, you've also got a couple of podcasts you feature on sometimes as well, right? It's good, including this one, including this one right here. Yeah, including <laughs> this one, there we go. Yeah, no, but uh, thank you, thank you for coming on, mate. Thank you for inviting me, it's been great, I've yeah. loved it. 
ladies and gentlemen, we are on uh, TikTok, Spotify, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram. We're, we're on many social media, so make sure to follow us on there too. I'll leave Elliot's uh, links in the description, and yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.